Hello there and welcome to the weekly edition of Dig Sports. We're going to take an inside look of LSU versus ULM upcoming this week. I'm Andrew Alexander and this is Dig Sports editor Trey Mongru. Trey, the Tigers threw two games, they beat Wisconsin and they thrashed Sam Houston State. What have you seen that you really like from the Tigers and what maybe still concerns you about this team? Well, the interesting thing about it, you know, two games, like you said, Wisconsin and uh, Sam Houston State, we still really don't know much about this team. You know, they pulled some kind of David Blaine-esque escape against Wisconsin, and then against Sam Houston State, they just bludgeoned a team that really didn't belong on the field with them. And so, you know, going into ULM, it's really the last tune-up game before SEC play starts against Mississippi State. And you, you, this being a young team, you really want to see that natural, natural progression this week. I think a big question a lot of LSU fans want to know is the quarterback battle. It looks like Anthony Jennings has really played, really lights out. He's had some great chemistry with Traven Doral through two games. Has he cemented his place as a starting quarterback moving forward? Well, you would think just by the reps that he's been getting. But, how, however, Miles did say at, both after the Sam Houston State game and at his uh, weekly uh, luncheon on Monday, he did say that Brandon Harris will continue to play. And it's interesting because, you know, it's not like Anthony Jennings is some seasoned veteran. He needs his reps too. So, you know, so far he's been the he, – they've been the one that he's relied on the most. However, you almost get the sense that – the fact that they do continue to play Harris, you almost feel that you know maybe down the road they think Harris will be the guy for the future. A big question a lot of people had last week was Leonard Fournette. Gets his first touchdown against Sam Houston State. <laughs> has a really good game, but he struck the Heisman pose. What are your thoughts on that? Obviously, it's, I think most people can agree it's too early. But what are your thoughts on the youngster having some fun? You know, you, you were there with me in the press box when that happened, and the first thing I said was a very audible, oh, no, I can't believe he did that. But, you know, going back on it, like you said, he's young. And Miles did give him a stern talking to on the sideline that, you know, everybody watching on national TV was there to see. I think, you know, going forward, you know, from all everything I've heard from other players on the team and from Leonard himself, he says he wants people to know that he is humble. Maybe that wasn't the best way about go, best way to do it. But I think, you know, going forward, this is a non-issue. So ULM, LSU, the Warhawks come in 2-0. You said the, one of the only other BC, uh, FBS opponents in Louisiana that's 2-0. They beat Wake Forest. Some people may say they shocked Wake Forest. Uh, I think the more shocking <laughs> thing, not that they beat them, was that Wake Forest actually traveled to Monroe the first Thursday <laughs> of college football. They beat Wake Forest, and also they beat Idaho. They narrowly escaped their Sun Belt Conference opener last week, 38-31. Uh, Warhawks coming into Baton Rouge this week. What do you see offensively from the Warhawks that maybe could give LSU some trouble? Yeah, it's the de facto Louisiana championship. Both these teams, these are the only two FBS teams in the state that are still undefeated at this point. And, you know, ULM, you know, don't, Think of what they were in the past. They're actually a decent team this year. They got a pair of really good receivers in Kenzie Jackson and Jalen Holly. Both already have over 170 yards, 170 receiving yards a season. Pete Thomas, you know, in his first year as the full-time starter after Colton Browning has been a mainstay there in the last couple of years, he's doing a good job in spreading the ball around. They have Satarius Donald running the ball. He's averaging 114 yards a game. However, you know, this is a passing team first, and if there's one thing we know about L the LSU defense this season is that their secondary is a strength. Led by Tredavious White, who, you know, as a freshman last year came on strong, and he seems to be progressing into the shutdown corner that everyone expected him to be this year. And then you just have a slew of safeties that you could plug in there, whether it's Jalen Mills, Ronald Martin, Ricky Jefferson, who came on and had the interception against Sam Houston State last weekend. And then, you know, Jamal Adams is fitting in there as well. So it's going to be very hard to pass against this LSU team this, this weekend. Defensively for LSU, you touched on the secondary a little bit. Obviously, I think some people have some defensive line concerns, whether it's maybe the ends and them still being dominant. I know Daniil Hunter leads the team in tackles, but I feel like maybe people want to see more pressure from Rasco and, and, and Daniil Hunter. But also the interior is probably the, the more uh, worrisome area for, for Tiger fans. Who, I mean, there's kind of a puzzle right now. You knew Christian Lagatour was a piece, and they've kind of rotated Quentin Thomas and, and, and Devin Gottschall, the freshman, Frank Heron, Greg Gilmore. What are, who are the two starters in that position going forward in defensive tackle? Well, in terms of just bodies, they're very deep on the interior line. You knew what you were going to get at Christian Lockatur this season. I think for what he, for, you know, coming from his freshman and sophomore year, he's been everything that they expected him to be. Quentin Thomas, you know, he's coming off that arm injury that was supposed to, it was originally reported that he was going to be out for the season with that. He, it turns out he didn't miss a game at all. He's been fine. But then you still have a lot of unknowns, like you mentioned, Frank Heron, Greg Gilmore. All those guys have been highly, tout, ha highly touted by Miles coming into the season, but really haven't seen the field much. You know, them still being relatively new to the system, I think as they get more games under their belt, they'll start to mesh even better. And I think down the line, that front seven or front four for LSU can be a real force. The ULM Warhawk defense comes in 
not necessarily maybe the most highly touted, uh, but a good defense nonetheless. Their linebacking core is something you want to watch out for. Senior Ray, senior linebacker Ray Stovall leads the Sun Belt with two and a half sacks, 12 tackles, a really a force on their uh, in offensive or defensive interior. Also, Hunter Kissinger and Cody Robinson, both part of the linebacking core as well, each registered an interception against Idaho. That's definitely, it looks like the strength uh, of that team on defense. Trey, what are your thoughts on the Warhawk defense? Well, you know, like you mentioned, that front seven is really strong. Through their, I mean, again, we have to preface everything we say here by it's only been two games in the season, but they're only allowing 1.8 yards per carry, and I don't care who you're playing, that's pretty stout. And, you know, the LSU rushing attack, coming into the season, everybody was thinking this is going to be the force, this is going to be LSU's anchor on offense. And for the most part, you know, you have Kenny Hilliard and Leonard Fournette, but Terrence McGee, number 18, we haven't really seen much of him in these first two games. You know, he's had 12 carries for, I think, 37 yards through these first two games. Daryl Williams, the, you know, little, the, the less heralded freshman that came out, of, came out of high school into this season, he's already have, he already has more carries and a better yards per carry average than Terrence McGee. So I think, you know, the LSU rushing attack needs to find some stability there as well. And going up against a fairly stout ULM defense, it might be a little tough. Well, the thing about Terrence McGee that I like to remind people, he really was more of a fourth quarterback last year. He's, he's a guy that came in uh, late in the games and hit home runs. You saw that in TC, you saw that in Arkansas. He's a guy whose role kind of developed throughout the year as it went on. He was sort of the second fiddle to Jeremy Hill. But he also uses a lot of running backs, especially in those SEC games. You'll remember Mississippi State, where four different guys had touchdowns, or three different guys at least. But uh, Jeremy Hill, Kenny Hilliard, Alfred Blue even got a touchdown. Uh, so, and Terrence McGee obviously was used a lot last year. He's a guy that had almost 700 yards and eight touchdowns last year. He'll get, he'll get in the end zone eventually. It'll happen. Obviously, they didn't have Leonard Fournette and Darrell Williams last year, uh, but they're still trying to figure things out. Outside of the of the running backs and the quarterbacks, wide receiving core. Trayvon Durrell's exploded. Malachi Dupree finally got his first touchdown. What have you seen so far that you like from the Tiger receivers? Well, I, I think that you know Trayvon Durrell has pretty effectively wiped away the tears of all the LSU fans that were you know crying over the departures of Jarvis Landry and Odell Beckham. You know, he is the legitimate deep threat. I, I mean, it's impossible to play one-on-one -on -one man coverage on this guy without having a safety over the top. We've seen that both times. You know, the 80-yard touchdown against Wisconsin, the 94-yard touchdown LSU record against Sam Houston State. However, if, you know, as it was reported that he got in the car accident, you know, has the stitches, may he's questionable to play this weekend, it'll be interesting to see because, you know, Anthony Jennings has really been relying on Doral more than anybody. It'll be interesting to see if if Doral doesn't go, you know, which one of these freshmen, whether it's DRs, uh, Quinn or Malachi Dupree, which one does Jennings turn to now? Trey, before we head out, what's your score prediction for the game? You know, last weekend I said that LSU, relatively speaking, would struggle against Sam Houston State and pull out a hard-fought 45-17 win. I was clearly wrong about that. They dominated the Bearcats in all three phases on the field that day. Uh, coming into this weekend, though, ULM presents a little bit of a st uh, stiffer test. You know, like we said, that front seven's very good. LSU will have some trouble running the ball. I don't know what the status of Doral is. But it's clear that LSU is going to have the more talented team on the field that day. ULM has to have a lot of things go right for them to even have a chance at this game. I think LSU wins rather com comfortably 38-10. I'm going to say 45-7, Les Miles going for his 98th career victory uh, this week against the ULM Warhawks. You keep it right here at digbatnews.com for all your LSU coverage.